everyone. For today's lesson, we are going to continue with our discussion on uh, proofs about lines and angles, part two. In this lesson, we are going to be um, discussing the vocabulary words of linear pair and vertical angles. Before you get started with this video lesson, please make sure that you have watched Proofs About Lines and Angles vocab video lesson and have all of our cutouts ready to go. Our focus for today are on two vocabulary words. That is linear pair and vertical angles. So let's go ahead and re-explore what those terms mean. The first term is linear pair. And what I really like about linear pair is that in its name, it spells out what's going on. Linear means that it's along a line, and pair means that it's two. So it's two angles that together form a line with each other. They are both supplementary and they are adjacent to each other. So whenever you see a straight line and you see one angle or an angle on one side and an angle on the other, you know that those two angles form a linear pair and together they are supplementary, which means together they add to equal 180 degrees. So all linear pairs are going to add to equal 180 degrees because they are supplementary. For these types of problems, you always wanna look for a straight line that's hidden in plain sight. So you might see a lot of intersecting lines and Wherever you see the line, that means that the two angles on each side are going to be linear pairs with each other. The second vocabulary word that we had was vertical angles. These are sometimes called the bow tie angles. And they are angles that are opposite of one another at the intersection of two lines. So that means that these are angles that only share a vertex. They do not share a side. So like angle one and angle two, they only share a vertex. They do not share a side and they are formed by two lines that are intersecting each other. They are considered vertical angles. But be careful by vertical. This is where it gets really tricky. Angle three and four, they are also considered vertical angles even though they're written horizontally. Technically, we could flip our picture to its side, and now we have vertical angles. So if the angles could form what we call a bow tie, if it can form a bow tie, those angles are considered vertical angles as well. And all vertical angles are congruent. So angle one is congruent to angle two, and angle three is congruent to angle four. They are vertical angles angles. So we're going to use those definitions of linear pair and vertical angles to help us answer the following questions. It says if the measure of angle 4 is 63 degrees, so I'm going to mark up 63 degrees, we want to now find the measure of angle 1, measure of angle 2, and the measure of angle 3. So I always recommend identifying the vertical angles first. So I know that angle two and angle four, they are congruent to each other. So I'm gonna write measure of angle one. I don't know what that is quite yet, but I know that the measure of angle two is equal to 63 degrees because of vertical angles. And then I don't know what the measure of angle three is yet. But what I do know is that there exists a line right here. And I know that angle three and angle four are a linear pair with each other. I also know that angle one and angle four are a linear pair with each other. So because they are a linear pair, we know that they add to equal 180. So the measure of angle one is going to be 180 minus 63. I can also say that angle one and angle two are a linear pair and angle two and angle three are a linear pair. So when I come up with my answer, all of those statements are going to be true and we will see supplementary as well as congruent angles. 
So 180 minus 63, that's going to be equal to 117 degrees. So now that I know that angle one is 117 degrees, I know that the measure of angle three is 117 degrees because they are vertical angles and vertical angles are congruent to each other. Let's go ahead and look at letter B. For letter B, be very careful. These two lines, these two rays are not forming a line. So they are not considered, we do not have vertical angles here. Angle two and this 117 are not vertical angles. So there are no vertical angles in this picture. Vertical angles are only where you have two straight lines intersecting each other. And this line right here is crooked. It is not considered vertical. But what we have instead are two linear pairs. So along this line, I have angle one and 117 that are a linear pair. So I'm gonna say that the measure of angle one is equal to 180 minus 117. And 180 minus 117, that is equal to 63 degrees. So the measure of angle one is 63 degrees. Let's go ahead and find the measure of angle two. The measure of angle two is also a linear pair, but it's a linear pair with 55 degrees. So I'm gonna write that the measure of angle two, that's gonna be equal to 180 minus 55. And 180 minus 55, that's gonna be equal to 125 degrees. So that is the measure of angle two is 125 degrees. And look at that, 125 and 117, they're close to each other, but they're not congruent to each other. So therefore, it just once again proves that we do not have vertical angles in this picture. All right, let's go ahead and look at example number nine. In example number nine, we wanna find X. So it's all about the relationships of the numbers that's given to you. So in this problem, I am given 113 degrees and 4x minus 1. These two angles together form a linear pair. They are not congruent to each other. We do not know any of that information, but we know that together they are along a, a straight line. So they are a linear pair. And we know that linear pairs add to equal 180 degrees because they are supplementary. So I'm gonna write 4x minus one plus 113 equals 180. The biggest misconception that students have is they'll make these two equal to each other. They're not vertical angles, so you cannot do that. Instead, they add to equal 180. So my negative one plus 13, that's 113, that's 112 equals 180. I'm going to subtract 112 on both sides. And when I do that, I end up with 4x is equal to 68. So I have, sorry, I have 4x is equal to 68, and I'm going to divide both sides by 4. And when I do that, I find that x is equal to 17. And that's our answer. Let's go ahead and look at letter B. For letter B, let's look at the relationship of the angles that we have. And looking at these two angles, they are vertical angles because the only thing that these two angles have in common is they share a common endpoint. And because they share a common endpoint and they are formed where two lines are intersecting each other, that means that we have vertical angles. And we know that vertical angles are congruent. And if they are congruent, that means that they are equal in measure. So I'm gonna take 4x minus 18 and set it equal to 3x plus four. From here, I'm going to subtract 3x on both sides. 
and I'm going to add 18 on both sides. So I'm doing more than one step in one step. What's going to happen is 4x minus 3x is 1x. Negative 18 plus 18 goes away. 3x minus 3x goes away. And 4 plus 18 is 22. So we find that x is equal to 22. They are only interested in finding x, so you do not have to find what the other angles were. If they do ask you, then you would obviously take 22 and plug it back in to find what these angles are. Finally, we have example number 10, and they're asking you to just find the values of x and y where we're gonna show all of our algebra work. So what you wanna do is match the x's and the y's. Sometimes the x's are going to be vertical angles. Sometimes the x's are going to be linear pairs. So you always want to look for the angle relationships of like variables. Sometimes it'll be just like you guys see here where it's going to be the x's are vertical angles and the y's are vertical angles but sometimes it's going to be different. They might be linear pairs. So you have to be careful. In this case, our X values and Y values, we have vertical angles in this case. And we know that vertical angles are congruent to each other. So I'm that if they're congruent, then that means they are equal in measure. And I can set 9X plus two equal to 10x minus 7. And now I'm going to solve for x by subtracting 9x on both sides and adding 7 on both sides, doing more than one step in one step. The 9x's cancel away, leaving me with 9 is equal to 10 minus 9 is x. So there's my answer for x. Now, using the same exact um, uh, definition for our y values, they are vertical angles as well. So I'm going to set 18y plus 25 equal to 9y plus 61. I am going to subtract 9y on both sides and I'm going to subtract 25 on both sides. And when I do that, 18 minus 9y is 9y the 25s go away, the 9Ys go away, and I have 61 minus 25, and 61 minus 25 is equal to 36. I'm gonna divide both sides by nine, and I find that Y is equal to four. I just need to find what my variables are, but if I was asked to identify more, obviously I would substitute these values back into the expressions that were given to me. And that is the end of part two. If you have any questions over anything, please feel free to email me. Otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful day.